Westerners are blessed by our region's environmental treasures. We value the surrounding mountains and water which provide nearby outdoor recreation and spectacular natural beauty. We value the salmon which migrate through the middle of Seattle every year. And we value our mountain streams and lakes which provide us with a reliable supply of clear, clean drinking water. We have a heritage of maintaining these treasures and preserving them for future generations. Because of these values, the people of the Seattle metropolitan area have invested much time and money restoring and preserving the Cedar River watershed. The watershed, located in the Cascade Mountains, about 30 miles east of Seattle, covers over 90,000 acres, about the same amount of land area as the city itself. Much of the watershed is surrounded by a crown of snowy mountain peaks. The jewel of that crown is Chester Morse Lake, near the source of the Cedar River. The forests and slopes around the lake collect the runoff from the rain and melting snow. That runoff eventually supplies clean drinking water to nearly one million people in the Seattle area. The water is stored in Morse Lake and later released into the Cedar River. It travels downstream nearly 12 miles to the Landsberg Diversion Dam. There, Seattle Public Utilities removes some of the flow for use as public drinking water, while the rest continues down the Cedar through central King County, emptying into Lake Washington. To prevent contamination, all of the watershed is closed to unsupervised public access. Educational programs are conducted, and human activities such as logging are carefully controlled by Seattle Public Utilities, and the natural systems in the forests, lakes, and streams are monitored. Well, the city of Seattle has been uh, working on acquiring the land in the watershed for almost 100 years, uh, beginning in the 1890s when the officials of the city at that time decided to make the Cedar River our new drinking water supply. Um, the program for acquiring the private lands began in the 1890s, a full century ago, and I found a letter, ironically, in the file to the federal government from the city of Seattle requesting a land exchange with what is now the Forest Service that was dated 1899. Bureaucracies being what they are, that land exchange finally took place in 1996. But it was quite significant because it was the last in a series of exchanges that gave the city 100% ownership of the Cedar River Municipal Watershed. The Cedar River Watershed is more than just a resource for drinking water. It is also habitat for a large variety of fish, wildlife, and plant species. The watershed's 86,000 acres of forest provides homes for deer, elk, and large predators like cougar and black bear. Endangered and threatened species like the spotted owl use its 14,000 acres of old growth forests. The streams, lakes, and wetlands provide habitat for fish and water birds. Using a set of environmental values adopted in the late 1980s, city workers manage the watershed to protect the natural systems and balance with the watershed's primary purpose, providing a source of clean drinking water. Much of the watershed has been logged over the past century, and some timber harvesting was continued over the last decade to provide money to acquire all the land within the watershed. Since the city's management of the watershed and the water supply can impact animal species considered endangered or threatened under federal law, a new management plan is being proposed. The Cedar River Watershed Habitat Conservation Plan, or HCP, will be based upon a preliminary agreement with state and federal agencies responsible for protecting fish, wildlife, and the environment. Simply put, this proposal is a blueprint to keep the city's water supply safe and healthy while restoring the natural systems and protecting the animals living in the watershed and in the river downstream. In the Habitat Conservation Plan, the city would commit to spend more than $70 million over a 50-year period to pay for the required work to protect and restore critical habitat for fish and wildlife.
The Habitat Conservation Plan would provide for establishment of an ecological reserve for over 60% of the watershed's 90,000 acres, including all the old growth forest. The reserve will also maintain substantial buffers on all wetlands, streams, and lakes. This part of the plan commits $20 million for habitat restoration. To pay these costs, the plan calls for the continued harvest and sale of some of the second growth timber outside the protected reserve. This harvest would use low impact forestry methods endorsed by many environmentalists and scientists. We want to take care of the next nursery generation. And so we manage our forest sustainably. For one thing, they use very light equipment, so light that it doesn't impact the soil. And they don't promote any fast growth by chemical fertilizers, that sort of thing. To make sure this forestry is sustainable, the harvest cycle will eventually increase to once every 120 years, several times longer than standard timber industry schedules. Some money from this harvest could be used for other environmental restoration efforts. Salmon and steelhead will also be an important part of the habitat conservation plan. Migratory fish have been blocked by the Landsberg Diversion Dam and prevented from spawning in the watershed for nearly a century. The habitat conservation plan would provide a fish ladder at the dam to allow Chinook, Coho, and steelhead to enter the protected portions of the watershed. The city would spend over $9 million for the fish ladder facilities and restoration of fish habitat below the dam. But because there are health concerns about having great numbers of rotting fish carcasses upstream of the drinking water intake, the plan has an alternative solution for the mass spawning sockeye salmon run in the cedar. The city currently funds a temporary sockeye hatchery below Landsberg Dam that is operated by the State Department of Fish and Wildlife. Although some believe artificial hatcheries are not as desirable as allowing natural fish spawning, this hatchery is considered essential by many to provide a fishery for the Muckleshoot tribe and sport anglers in Lake Washington. Artificial as it may be, still some still benefits to not only my people, but, but to the uh, surrounding community at large. Can we afford to wait for natural conditions to come back. If natural conditions ever do come back to the Seattle area, the greater metropolitan area, it, we have to ask ourselves truly, can we afford to, can my people afford to sit on the bank for the next 25, 30 years? To meet the needs of the Muckleshoot tribe and sport anglers, the Habitat Conservation Plan would provide for expanding the existing sockeye hatchery and doubling its production. In addition, three and a half million dollars would be used for monitoring to ensure there are no unintended impacts of the hatchery. The plan would guarantee the water flow in the river will be sufficient for fish to survive the migratory passages from Puget Sound to the watershed. Seattle's proposed Habitat Conservation Plan relies on scientific criteria and research to best protect all the species dependent on the watershed and to maintain our region's environmental values. With this blueprint, the Cedar River watershed will continue to deliver clean drinking water well into the next century. Well, the Cedar River flows right through Lake Washington, Lake Union, the heart of our city. This is essentially our central park. And to have healthy salmon flow right through these lakes gives us a chance to really know and love the environment that we live in. And it, it motivates us to protect the environment. I'm Seattle City Council member Margaret Pageler. Now we need your help. Seattle City Council and Seattle Public Utilities need to know what you think. Does this plan properly embrace your environmental values? Copies of the Agreement in Principle and the Draft Habitat Conservation Plan are available in all Seattle Public Libraries and King County Libraries as well. In the fall, there will be a series of public workshops and meetings to answer your questions and provide more information about the draft plan. And then there will be a formal public comment and review period. Please let us know what you think. If you'd like more information or would like to comment, write to Jim Freeman at Seattle Public Utilities, 19901 Cedar Falls Road Southeast, 
North Bend, Washington, 98045. Or email jim.freeman at ci.seattle.wa.us. Thank you.